Okay, so here's a conceptual problem uh, that basically involves a, a mixture of three closely related compounds that is in vapor-liquid equilibrium. So these are just normal alkanes. And so we expect that these should form a, a near ideal solution because they should interact with the other compounds. So hexane should interact with heptane pretty similarly to how hexane would inter interact with another hexane molecule because they had very similar molecular architectures. And in this problem, we, we are given information that the, about what the fugacity of each component in the liquid phase is. And the fugacity is such that it's 0.33 atmospheres in each of the liquid phases. And you're given information about the boiling points, which follow the standard trend that the larger the molecule, the higher the boiling point. And so then the question says, what component, if any, is present in the greatest total amount or total number of moles in the vapor-liquid mixture? All right, so if we're given, in this case, that the fugacity of the liquid, which I'll denote like this, in this mixture is equal to 0 0.33 atmospheres for all three components. That means that we can write three different equations assuming an ideal solution using Reynolds' law. So we know that we're dealing with pressures that are in the atmospheric range. And so we expect that we have ideal gas behavior, as we just described. We also expect ideal solution behavior. And so Reynolds' law seems like a good assumption. And so we can write for each component an expression of this form. And this term, if you remember, under the assumptions of ideal solution is equal to the fugacity of the liquid component. All right, so the fugacity of the liquid component in the mixture is equal to its mole fraction times saturation pressure. So then this is equal to 0 0.33 atmospheres for each component. Okay, now we furthermore know that if this is the case, then the mole fraction in the vapor phase for each component if we have a fixed total pressure of one atmosphere, then yi, which is equal to the y for each component, so I'll label them components one, two, and three, would all have to be equal to 0 0.33. And so our vapor phase composition is the same. It's 33% in each case. Now we can consider the liquid phase. The yellow box here shows the relationship between the liquid phase fugacity and the saturation pressure and mole fraction. And so we can write out this relationship that we have the fugacity of 0 0.33 atmospheres, and that's equal to that liquid phase mole fraction times the saturation pressure for each of the three components. All right, in this case, however, the saturation pressures vary for the three components. All right, of course, when we're doing the vapor phase mole fractions, we use the same pressure for each component. All right, but here the saturation pressures differ, and they differ such that the higher the boiling point, the lower the saturation pressure, or conversely, the lower the boiling point, the higher the saturation pressure. All right, and hexane is our lowest boiling component, so P1 sat is the greatest, and P3 sat is the least um, because it's our least volatile component, octane. And therefore, to compensate for this fact, while still preserving this equality that we have a 0.33 atmospheres, all right, octane has to have the highest mole fraction, followed by heptane, followed by hexane, so that we can still achieve 0.33 atmospheres in each equality. All right, and that again is because the saturation pressure is different for each of the components, causing the mole fractions to be different in the liquid phase, whereas they, we observed that they were the same in the vapor phase. We had the same amount of each component, and thus, for that reason, we have the same amount of each component in the vapor phase, we have more octane in the liquid phase, and therefore, for our entire system, we have more octane. And the minority component in this case is hexane.